uh, as we go ahead and try to fight this guy here. I don't know why he went in. Ooh, the Thanatos is in as well. We're going to be able to kill him as well. Flick our mouse a bit. She's dead. <laughs> Bruh. We're really far ahead. I don't know why they're going in one by one. They're super hardly throwing. I mean, she's level 14. Even if she ults, like, it doesn't mean much. I'm able to kill her. Hello, hope you're doing well, and welcome to a new video. Right before I get started, my Discord is down in the description. Uh, if you'd like to play or chat with me or anyone else in the server, uh, you can do that using that link down below. Uh, and we have quite a lot of people now, so you'll always have someone to play Smite with. Uh, secondly, the Twitch is also down there. I do stream daily, and the schedule is in the Discord as well. With that out of the way, let's get started. Alright, so we are playing Soul. Uh, now, Soul is obviously very powerful uh, in this current meta. Uh, the new item has made that possible. I think the mage uh, ADC is kind of... Oh, he's gonna die. Rip. Uh, the mage ADCs were pretty good. Like, they weren't underbalanced. Uh, but when, you know, you have tanks building heavily into health, and even if they're not, uh, you know, mages and the ADC role had a answer up against... Uh, the tankier targets through protections, but they didn't really have anything up against healthier uh, characters that buy into some health items alongside some protection items. Uh, so what we saw a lot was people going actually for... Um, what's the word? Soul Reaver. Uh, so going like full attack speed and then going into Soul Reaver. Uh, obviously this was a bit iffy because you're buying a character to counter health because you so desperately need that extra damage based on the enemy's health. Oh, we're getting kicked. Uh, we should be able to get away here. He used everything already. Nice show. Uh, you so desperately need to be able to have an answer up against their health. Uh, but at the same time, the only option that you have is Soul Reaver, which doesn't really fit with the build that you're trying to go. Uh, but now we have Cyclopean Ring, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, it allows you to counter this uh, you know, issue that these mages have without having to build off of your build path. Uh, you know, into a ability-based item as a auto-attack-based mage. Alright, so with that, they're very powerful, so you've probably seen a lot of soul in your games, you're probably a band, uh, soul, Oleron. Uh, the one thing about soul is she's very safe. Uh, she, not only is she very safe, she has a lot of healing, she has very safe poke with her too. Uh, her ultimate does an absolutely insane amount of damage. Uh, she has a decent amount of CC, she has a slow, she has her ultimate knockup, and then again, her 3 just makes her really like hard to kill in the team fights. When you have a bit of peel and they can peel just while you're kind of getting into it, you can waste so much time. Uh, we're going up against a Neath, which isn't that big of an issue. I mean, Neath doesn't have the best clear. Uh, I feel like people pick Neath and they kind of think, like back then you had a reason to pick Neath because she had like the best clear in the game. Uh, and I feel like people still think that that's the case, but with more characters added into the game, uh, her clear no longer stands out amongst the rest of the cast. Her damage is lacking, and put simply, auto attack, or sorry, ability based ADCs aren't really strong right now. Um, but yeah, so this should be a pretty easy lane. We already do have a lead from getting first blood, uh, so not something I'm too worried about. Remember when people played uh, Tingle against by Beyonce backwards? Oh, she was worshipping say I see all the lovely people. We are not gonna have fun. An enemy has been exactly. the There we go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that might have been just laughing. Amazing. You have like eight archers here. Alright, so in every game that you start, you want to kind of think of a goal that you have in mind, right? Uh, what is your goal, uh, for example, with the pick that you're picking? Right? Uh, so, just to give you some example of some goals that might be good to have here, as we probably will kill her. She has to jump away. Uh, she uses the shell, but the alt does a lot of damage. The two will slow her. Yeah, there's no way she was getting away from that. The minute she, like, I walked behind her, you guys saw, uh, if you guys uh, were paying attention, I walked behind her in preparation for her dashing away, or rather leaping away, backflipping, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I was in a good position to follow up off of her escape. This guy should die as well. Oh, unfortunate. I'm gonna dive him. I mean, I only need to hit one ability and I'm faster than him. Nice. 
so as I was saying, you want to have a goal in mind, just to give you a couple examples, is your goal to kill the squishies as fast as possible, and this applies for every role, not just carry, uh, mid, solo. Uh, are you trying to pressure the mage, are you trying to pressure the assassin, are you trying to pressure the enemy hunter, right? Um, are you trying to deal with the squishy characters, or are you trying to deal with the tankier characters? Um, so put simply, with this character, my main goal is to be able to deal with anything that comes my way. I don't want to chase too hard. Uh, if someone manages to get away from me, I just want to switch targets. Uh, and if the enemy target, the target that I'm switching onto is a tank, then I want to be able to do enough damage to be a threat to the tank as well. Uh, in some games that not that might not be, uh, oh, unfortunate. Uh, in some games that might not be your ultimate goal. In some games they might have, you know, like a mage solo laner, uh, and you might not really worry about the squishies as much, so you might not want to build into items like Demonic Rip or items such as the new Cyclopean Ring. Uh, and this is ultimately what I'm trying to get into with the um, what is your goal kind of topic, because this is directly going to affect what you're going to build, uh, right? So concerning my goal is to kind of do consistent damage and be able to deal with anything that comes my way and provide my team with support no matter whether they're squishy or tanky uh then i have to build a bit towards both right telekine's ring to do extra damage based on my power uh we're going to go the demonic rip and we're going to go the what's the word cyclopean ring and we'll go into a build a bit later once i have a bit more of the build built build built so i can explain what it does alongside you know some gameplay uh, but for now i want you to just make a habit of every time you join into a game look at the enemy team uh, kind of say who am i trying to avoid who am i trying to take care of uh, and these things might change throughout the game right uh, you might go in with the goal uh, as a mid laner for example of trying to just one shot the squishier characters uh, but then you find that you're having a lot of trouble up against the enemy solo laner uh and the enemy support and maybe they even have a tankier jungler such as like an achilles jungle or something you have to go ahead and change your goal at that point uh because if the tanks aren't allowing you to do anything nothing is going to change right they're still going to keep not allowing you to do anything at that point uh if it's working out so far so then you have to change your strategy from maybe one shot items such as rana to hoodie uh you know the high power items with not a lot of pen or even a, you know flat pen and you're going to have to build into more percentage pen as opposed to the flat pen. Uh, maybe even throw in something like a soul reaver. Uh, so I'm just trying to kind of show you guys what I mean by pick a goal so you can build accordingly. Um, but yeah, in regards to this specific game, uh, our goal again is to do consistent damage about everyone. Because the truth of the matter is, uh, soul can't really dive and she doesn't have... Like, she's not like a mage where she could just like shoot past the enemy oh she does yeah i was just gonna take the tower and kill her i don't know what that was uh she's not a mage that can just shoot past the tanks and towards the back line like someone like morgan the fake could where she can just cast her one across or Scylla can crack her cast her two across uh you know this this is a character that gets body blocks her three you really don't use as damage Sometimes you do when you're backing up uh, this Thanatos should die here. Uh, sometimes you do use it as damage, but at the same time... Oh yeah, this guy's getting one shot. Oh Morgan, we're just gonna keep auto attacking here. We need to keep life stealing so we can keep ourselves alive. And nice, we're able to get her. Uh, we'll go ahead and call Gold Fury here, see if the team wants to follow up on this Gold Fury. Uh, like I was saying, her one is very close range. Her two gets body blocked by any tank that's standing in the way. Uh, her three, obviously, you don't use as damage in the late game team fights. Team fight. Team fights. Sorry. Uh, you use it as an escape, and occasionally as damage, but even then, it's close range damage because you're not going to walk past the tanks into the back line with the three and then just kind of be left with no escape. And then the ultimate is kind of just used for the knockup because it's very hard to hit. You know, multiple percent. Or, you know, multiple shots, if you will. Uh, so yeah, this is something that I want you to think about. Uh, you're going to have to deal with those tanks, because you're not going to be able to bypass them with this character, like other characters would be able to. Um, 
So with that uh, being said, we have to build so that we can take care of these tanks as well as these uh, squishier characters. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the build here. Uh, the starter item really is up to you. I feel like going Death's Toll is okay, but I feel like it's kind of adding too much healing onto your build. You're going to have healing regardless. They're going to counter it eventually. Uh, so you don't want to build too heavily into it. But if you want that super high sustain early, uh, it is very good for that. Uh, I mean, you're never going to run out of mana uh, with potions. You're never going to run out of health. Like, truth of the matter is, it makes you very threatening in the early game. Uh, I decided to go for the Gilded Arrow. There is one reason for this, and really one reason only. Uh, it's not for the passive gold. It, the mana helps, but that's not the reasoning behind it. It's for the extra 20 power, or 20, you know, bonus damage on your own attacks. It's very, very powerful early. I mean, that's an extra 20 damage early. Uh, that cannot be understated, and that's per auto attack, which is very powerful. A nice kill on the Neath. Um, so that's the reasoning for the starter item, and the reality of it is, late game I end up selling it for something a bit more valuable because I don't need the attack speed. Uh, late game, the you know small amount of bonus damage from the auto attack stops becoming that useful. Uh, and there's just really no reason to get that when you can get another item to help you in much more situations. Uh, now, Telekine's Ring. Telekine's Ring is extremely cheap. It gives you everything you need. It gives you attack speed, it gives you lifesteal, uh, it gives you extra, uh, you know, damage from your auto attacks. And most importantly, it's cheap. You can have this item very, very soon. It's like the cheapest item with lifesteal on it. Uh, and there's really no reason not to get it. It does a lot of extra damage. It gives you the attack speed. Uh, again, no reason not to get it. Now, moving on to the second one, we have Bancroft. Now, Bancroft is very good for a couple of reasons. It doesn't give you attack speed, but it gives you lifesteal. Soul benefits a lot from lifesteal. Obviously, she needs that sustain uh, to continue to pump out as much damage as possible. Uh, also, healing off of like the two alt combo can heal you back to like half health in a sticky situation if you hit multiple teammates you're just full health or sorry uh, enemies uh, but most importantly you want the upgrade uh, the Bancroft's uh, it's not the claw what is it called I can't remember what it's called uh, the the one that I have right now the purple one um, it gives you an insane amount of attack speed uh, it allows you to cap your attack speed earlier than you would if you weren't going it uh, and then the passive. I mean, the passive cannot be understated. This passive uh, gives you, if you were to drop very low, it gives you an insane amount of power. It gives you an insane amount of lifesteal. It just, it's like, if they manage to get you, like, under half health, you're just like, okay, well, now I'm hitting you double as hard and healing double as much, right? And it's very powerful in that regard. Uh, and then we'll get into the next item a bit later that works very well with this item. And the real reason that this build is so, uh, what's the word, it's just in impossible to go against, to be honest. Uh, but up next, Cyclopean Ring. Uh, I want to be able to deal with the tankier targets now, because it's, as you've been able to see, I've been rotating a lot. Uh, I'm kind of making it a habit of rotating now early on. Uh, I already have the tower on left, which makes it very difficult for me to farm efficiently, because I have to walk all the way up to the tier 2 to farm. And when that's the case, it makes it very easy for them to gank me. Uh, and even, like, disregarding the fact that it's very easy to gank, if I were to get ganked, there's no way I'm going to get from the tier 2 all the way down to my tier 1. Right? So it makes it very difficult for me to farm, so I have to rotate, or else I'm just going to fall behind. The Sneath can just freeze the wave up there, and there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, so I'm rotating already, and like I mentioned, I can't bypass these tanks, so they have to be my priority for now. Right, because the real people I'm going to be finding fighting for now is going to be the tanks. Now I'm very far ahead, and so is the team in general. They're not too far ahead. I mean, it's 16 kills to 10. Uh, I hold the majority of the lead, and the Morgan the Fae holds the rest of it. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, I'm going to have to deal with these tanks. I can't bypass them. I can't shoot past them. My auto attacks get body blocked. My two gets body blocked. My one is low, close range. My three, I'm not really using for damage. So I have to fight them before I can fight the squishies. Uh, so I need to buy the Cyclopean Ring first to ensure I'm able to efficiently do damage against them so that then maybe I can go ahead and uh, start focusing on the enemy squishier characters. 
and not lose as much health as I would if I wasn't doing that much damage to the tanks. Uh, Cyclopean Ring is going to help me do more damage to the tanks, therefore lose less health, uh, therefore be able to fight the squishies at more of an advantage. Uh, all right, so with that out of the way, I'm going in. I'm going to talk about Typhon's Fang. Now we don't have Typhon's Fang yet, uh, but we will have it here soon. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read to you the stats on Typhon's because I really want to like kind of drive this point home on why this item is insane, specifically with another item in the build. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So Typhon's Fang gives you 70 magical power, which isn't the most power, unfortunately we died, <laughs> which isn't the most power. Uh, it gives you 200 mana, which really isn't that important, uh, but most importantly, it gives you 15% magical lifesteal and 10% magical penetration. Uh, now, those stats aren't too impressive in and of themselves, uh, but let me go ahead and look at the passive here. Lifesteal is increased by 25%, your, sorry, your healing obtained from magical lifesteal is increased by 25%. Uh, meaning this is just you're increasing your efficiency by 25% What's cool about this is you see a lot of people buying contagion or like these lower anti-heal items uh, That give you 25% anti-heal this item completely counters those types of items, right? Uh, this one increases your healing by 25% the other one decreases it so it balances out completely So if that's the only anti-heal that they have access to they basically don't have any anti-heal at all uh, But most importantly the second part here um, your magical power is increased by twice the amount of your magical lifesteal. This means however much lifesteal you have, if you double that number, you get that number as, um, what's the word? You get that number as power. Uh, so right now in the build, we have 15 from this item, we'll have 15, we have 15 from Bancrofts, we'll have another 15 from, uh, what's the word? Typhon's Fang, that's 30. We have 10 from the start, the item that we got us to start, Telecoins. Uh, meaning altogether, this is 40. 40 uh, lifesteal. So with this, again, if we go look at the, um, what's the word, passive again, double that number, which is 40, and you get that as power, which is 80. Now the item also does give you 70 power base from the stats. Uh, as we go ahead and try to fight this guy here. I don't know why he went in. Ooh, the Thanatos is in as well. We're going to be able to kill him as well. Flick our mouse a bit. She's dead. <laughs> Bruh. We're really far ahead. I don't know why they're going in one by one. They're super hardly throwing. I mean, she's level 14. Even if she ults, like, it doesn't mean much. I'm able to kill her. Uh, so anyways. As I was saying. Oh, this guy should die as well. We kill. Oh, they surrendered. That's unfortunate. Okay. So what you're seeing right now is I. This is the same gameplay. I just put it back a bit. Um, because I just want to finish my point here. Um. So Typhon's Fang. Again, 80 power just from the passive alone. 70 power alone from the stats. Uh, and again, you're going to have more lifesteal eventually. So this number is going to go up. But just so far in the build after we get the Typhon's Fang. Uh, this item is going to give you 150 power. What other item will give you 150 power and 10% penetration for stats and obviously the mana as well, uh, which doesn't really matter as much. And then also increase your healing efficiently, efficiency by 25%. So you can see how powerful this item is. Uh, now, remember I mentioned an item that pairs very well with this item? Bancroft's Talon. Bancroft's Talon does two things with the passive. The lower you get, the more lifesteal you get, and the more power you get. What's nice about this is, the lower you get, Bancroft's will give you more power and more lifesteal. When you get more lifesteal from Bancroft's Talon passive, you get more power from Typhon's Fang passive. So, both of these items put together when you're under half health, just straight up, like, max you out in power, just with these two items together. Uh, so we've got, you know... Uh, Bancroft's increasing your power and lifesteal, Typhon's increasing your power and lifesteal, both together, right? And with more lifesteal from Bancroft's, it's more power from Typhon's. And with more, you know, power from Typhon's and lifesteal from Bancroft's, it's 
more healing because of the 25% increased efficiency with Typhon's Fang. Uh, so you can see just how powerful this ends up being. Um, final item. You could go into something like a Polynomicon. Uh, you could go into Haste Ring if you're having trouble keeping up with people. But I really don't recommend Haste Ring because it's just not high enough power. Uh, but even something like a Rod of Tahuti for some raw damage or some more flat pen. Spear of the Magus is fine, giving you uh, power, penetration, and lifesteal. Uh, it really is up to you. If you want to counter build with some anti-heal, uh, Toxic Blade, Divine Ruin is fine. It's really the sky is the limit with the very last item. It really is up to you. Uh, Polynomicon is something that I would recommend highly. And late game, you can sell your starter item for any other counter item so you don't have to not get the Polynomicon. Um, so that's the build. Again, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Truth of the matter is, with this build, you have Demonic Grip and you have Cyclopean Ring, which allows you to deal with the tanks. But again, Typhon's Fang and Bancroft's Talon put together allows you to have an insane amount of power, especially when you get, you know, to those lower healths, like, you know, 50% or a little bit under uh, 50%, you're going to be like at 800 power just from these two items alone. Uh, so, again, I hope that kind of shows you guys perspective, uh, perspective on how you're able to deal with both tanks and the squishier characters. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed, learned something. Um, like I mentioned, I stream every uh, every day <laughs> every day uh tuesdays and wednesdays are a bit longer of a stream at eight hours uh, and then every other day is five hour long stream the schedule is down in the description if that's something you're interested in oh, well not the schedule but the discord is down in the description you can join that the schedule is in there and also you have a community to play with uh, if that's something you're interested in uh anyways you guys have yourselves a great day bye